Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. This is Dunbury Clues by Harapan Ong. Before we do this, like and subscribe and check out onlinemagic.co. That's my online magic resource. Check it out, learn from me. Uh, I'm going to do this quickly, that bit quickly, because this is obviously it's not a full review. I'm doing these tricks off of optics and telling why I like them. And this is one of my favourite tricks of the whole thing, mainly because it's from a shuffled deck or can be from a shuffled deck and uses no gimmick cards. Not going anything against them, but uh, I do like just a going cold because I'm lazy and I don't like preparing things. If you want to do this from a shuffled deck, you're going to have to uh, be able to do a spread cull. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through that after the trick, but I'll show you the trick first and, um, and then we'll sort of, we'll talk about it. You're going to say stop, stop. Now remember the card, please. Don't forget it, because if you get it, it makes it a lot more tedious at the end of the trick. Let's give it a little shuffle. And what's going to happen is instead of me uh, just naming your card, that'd be tedious. The cards themselves are going to help me find your cards by giving me clues. So that's a six. What that means, uh, if I decode that, is that your card is rectangular in shape. Okay. Uh, the next card is going to be a nine. Uh, what that means is your card is made of a kind of card-like material, a bit like cards. Uh, we're going to get a little bit more specific, you know, but we don't want to rush these things. Uh, this tells me that your card is a number three. So I know your card is a three. Uh, let's give it a cut. So I'll use that, as I said, to find your card. If we count down three, one, two. What's your card? The three of hearts. They find it quite funny. There you go. The three of hearts, which goes with the three of clubs, three of spades, and three of diamonds. So I said you can get into this from a shuffled deck. Now you can, but you're going to have to be able to use a spread curl. Now I'm at the moment doing an awful spread curl, <laughs> uh, but I can do, and I sometimes do an awful spread curl when I'm working. But I think if you're chatting and people aren't really, you know, taking much, you know, notice of the cards, you know, you're looking at it and you're going, you know, I'm having a look through just to see if the deck's giving me any clues. And that's the deck pretty much set up uh, just there. So, that's what it will take you if you can do a spread curl. Again, that was an awful spread curl, but it's sometimes quite realistic what I do when I'm just uh, faffing around with the cards. But of course, you don't have to set up. You can set up uh, beforehand and do a couple of um, do a couple of false cuts or anything you want, and you can get into it. It's one of my favourite kind of tricks. This the, the Dunbury delusion was the original Charlie Miller in expert card technique, and this whole point of you looking like you're getting it all wrong, you look like you get the wrong card, and then you you reveal it and it matches the free cards, kind of like a matching the card effect. And I really really like it. One of the first non pick a card, I name it tricks that I ever saw, and I, I always remember it. And when I saw it done, it was done with, with this weird kind of way of doing this and showing the bottom card, but I still found it magical. So this is going to take a bit of sleight of hand. Obviously, you will see some of the sleight of hand um, on the video because it's, all this stuff is made to be performed live in it. But don't worry, you might sort of look at it and go, oh, so, but when you're performing it, nobody um, can, can, they can pretty much burn the pack. Uh, I think it's great. I think it's, it's commercial, it makes sense. And for me, I love it just because I just, I think there's something about that plot where you reveal it at the end. You've got to be a bit careful uh, because you can kind of, there's, there's two effects here, right? There's the effect that they're, they're seeing the card being put down on the table and they're convinced you haven't got it. And then the effect is that you turn over and you have got it, one effect. And then the second effect is showing the three cards. I've found that sometimes I can do that, do that, and while they're still thinking they're they kind of seen these cards and they don't really process it. So I'd say separate the two things. Um, play with, you know, saying these are all threes and then showing this one and the other way around and you may find that one of them is stronger than the other. But for me, it's really playing that thing of showing it, them thinking the trick's over, looking down there and then showing them the other threes. And there are different ways you can do the end bit. You can, instead of using the three and counting down three, you could um, do a second deal and they give you a number between one and ten. There's lots of ways of doing this. Obviously, this is the, 
the presentation that Harapan does with the, it's made of, his, his is kind of, he goes into it more than me, and he does more cuts at the beginning and things like this. I tend to just go straight into it as I'm chatting. But, you know, giving it a, a shuffle or anything like, or something like that or a cut, uh, would make it a little bit more convincing. But I think it's a great treat. One of my favourites on there. It doesn't use any gimmick cards and, uh, and very, very commercial. And that's Dunbury Clues.